All right, guys, just like every other episode, the first rule is to look cool. But seriously, we're practicing all the right safety rules out here. We've got all the safety equipment. We're running simunition. Don't try any of this stuff at home. As a SEAL for 12 years, I learned quick that testing and evaluation are critical. I want to have the zip ties knuckle to knuckle. You have no idea what works and what doesn't until the bullets actually start flying. And now that I'm out, I get tons of people asking me all the time about their favorite TV shows and movies. What's realistic and what isn't? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's time to put Hollywood to the test. I'm Dom Rosso, and this is Media Lab. Yo, homie. Give me your wallet. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm pretty stoked about this week's episode of Media Lab because it's all about awareness and training, plus we get to shoot some simunition. Having the right skills will teach you to see the world differently. And it's not that we're paranoid, we just understand our environment a little bit better. I'm always scanning my environment and evaluating potential threats. And that's what I like about these two scenes right here from Born Identity and Spy Game. Check it out. Well, technology gets better every day, and that's fine. Most of the time, all you need is a stick of gum, a pocket knife, and a smile. We can tell you the license plate numbers of all six cars outside. Every building, every room, every situation, a snapshot. I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm also checking the room, memorizing the people, what they're wearing. I can tell you that our waitress is left-handed, and the guy sitting up at the counter weighs 215 pounds and knows how to handle himself. The suit in the kitchen. Threat? Wait, how'd you see that? I know the best place to look for a gun is the cab of the gray truck outside. And at this altitude, I can run flat out for a half mile before my hands start shaking. It's just like breathing. You breathe, don't you? Guy reading the menu. Don't look at him. He wasn't reading the menu. Not reading at all. Threat? Only to the hostess. All right. These guys are memorizing a lot of different things in their environment. In reality, being trained helps you understand what you should be focusing on first. Now, is it realistic to think that I should be memorizing all the plates outside? I guess that depends on what the mission is, doesn't it? Those scenes definitely got a little Hollywood, but can you honestly tell me that you never tried to look in the reflection of a urinal to see if someone was sneaking up behind you? Dylan? No, I never do that. I guess I'm the only one. While awareness is really important and it allows us to avoid bad situations, training is just as important. And in this scene from Collateral, Tom Cruise saves his own ass in an alleyway and shows a high level of training that we're really excited to go break down. But first, let's check the scene out. Hey! Hey, I'm in the cab! Hey! All right, so they're obviously in a dark alleyway, right? Sometimes those situations alley. are best to avoid, but these guys are in a little bit more of a deliberate situation. You've got a couple of guys that notice a vulnerable situation. Oh, man, yeah. These guys don't look too friendly, especially that guy with the goatee. Never trust the man with the goatee. It's my life motto. Exactly. What's up, man? What's going on? Look, I'm tied up in here. This guy tied me up. So what ends up happening is he pulls a gun on him. At that point, you typically want to comply with what's going on and give him what he wants. Although sometimes you could comply and things can still go south. Absolutely. It's kind of ridiculous how he's tied up with zip ties and can't do anything about it. There's a few different ways you can handle that, and Dill and I are going to help break that down. So these guys walk away. Obviously, again, this is deliberate. Tom Cruise walks out. He obviously wants his briefcase back. And we love this scene because it's extremely evident that Tom Cruise has done some real training, and he got with Mick Gold, a consultant beforehand, and did this training. Nonviolent posture. Guns offline, shoots from retention, and then he's putting shots in the other guy. We're gonna take that out and run that in full speed to test and evaluate it to see if it's actually effective. I agree with it, I really like it, and the only part that I don't like is when he goes to retention and he goes offline, he's really high center here, and he's really off balance, he's kind of on his tippy toes. I think that was the one thing. He has that old-fashioned speed rock technique. Speed rock, exactly. Yeah. So before Dylan and I break down the fight scene, we couldn't stand how freaking helpless Jamie Foxx was when he was zip-tied to the steering wheel of the cab. It's like, come on, Jamie. You got to do better than that, buddy. So we're going to go, and we're going to do something about that right now. All right, guys. In the scene in Collateral, Jamie Foxx finds himself zip-tied to a steering wheel. So I'm actually going to rotate these all the way down to the point where there's a, a stiff part of the steering wheel. I want to have the zip ties knuckle to knuckle. I want to use my entire body. I want to load up, and then I'm exploding. Now we're going to talk about sawing through these things and creating friction. Using any type of string or anything you can use in your environment, most shoes and boots have laces, and that's a perfect example. If I come down with my hands and bring my shoe up, easily all day I can untie my shoe and take that lace off to use. I'm not going to take it off my shoe, but I have another string that I can use that's actually sitting in my pocket. So. Manipulating myself again, right? 
just a string. And once, I, once you have the string in your hand, obviously you wanna be careful to keep control of it. So once I feed it through, what I wanna do is grab it with my teeth and I wanna burn through this thing. So the best thing I can do is that the first initial cut to set it is gonna be the most important part of this as opposed to traveling all the way up the zip tie. I wanna focus that energy and that heat in one spot. And I'm gonna go back and forth with the string a couple of times and I should be out. Go through the other one. All right, so we really wanted to bring the scene in here. Hopefully you guys got some cool tips out of this, but now let's go break down my favorite part of this episode. Just like every other scene in Media Lab, we try to make it as realistic as possible. So not only am I wearing what Tom Cruise wore, we're in an alleyway setting the same scene as it was before. So we're setting that realistic environment. So he comes out into the alleyway with that situational awareness, walking up to these guys that have his briefcase. Seeing Tom Cruise's actions being so clean, we went and did a little research. Mick Gold was the consultant that helped him do live fire training before the movie even was filmed. As he approaches these guys and asks for his briefcase, this guy approaches with the gun already drawn out. So what does he do? We always talk about nonviolent postures, bringing his hands up right in the line of the gun. He gets his body offline simultaneously, drawing his own firearm, puts two rounds into this guy. That gets him the flinch response, gets him moved back. Now I've got the secondary threat. So as soon as I put two in him, I'm extending out, putting two in his chest and one in his face. So after I do that, I'm hitting his central nervous system. He's lights out and he walks up to this guy, puts a round in his head, grabs his briefcase and goes on about his business. Now, that sequence is exactly how I would have done it and not any different. The key takeaway here is, is he's got a gun in his waistband and I'm gonna try to get rounds on him before he can pull out and get rounds on me. So there's a lot going on, but he's gonna have to react off of me. So action's always faster than reaction. I've got to get my body cleared, put two rounds and get two rounds into him. So we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna run it in full speed right now. Yo, homie, is that my briefcase? Your briefcase? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you want it back? Okay. Give me your oh, wallet. Huh? Okay, so we ran that in full speed. And like we said before, we really like this scene because the work that Tom Cruise and Mick Gold did really showed. So when we broke that down and carrying everything the way he did, the way he carries, the sequence that he went through, it worked out exactly the way we thought it was and we didn't really poke any holes in it. So we're gonna approach this again, except I'm not gonna be carrying it. I'm not gonna have a gun and they're gonna approach me the same way. We're gonna see what takeaways we get from that. Yo, homie, is that my briefcase? You want it back? Whoa. Your wallet. Oh, dude, what do you want from me? Okay, so the main difference in that one is I went into it without a gun. What am I gonna do? The first thing I'm starting to do is analyze what type of gun he has, what condition it's in, and what I have to do to get that gun up and running. I'm not just gonna drop it on the ground because I don't have my own. Once I get control of the weapon, I'm trying to manipulate that guy I just took it from to put him in between me and the second attacker. Now, once I get this gun up and running, I can put rounds into him and then kind of assess what I have to do with this guy to make sure he's not producing any other weapons. So that's the difference. That was really fun. You have to get combative and more combative than you would if you had your own pistol. Now, let's take it to Q&A. All right, guys, I get to answer a couple of questions. And the first one is, should you always run if your attacker has a gun and you don't? The first thing I tell people, you can't jump to a conclusion, should I run right away if I see a gun, right? Your scenario dictates what you should be doing and what your next move should be. That comes through with training and experience and understanding what to do with your environment. But if somebody pulls out a gun and you don't have one, the first thing I'd be doing is looking for some cover and then making your next move. It gives you a little bit of time to figure out what you're gonna do. Next question. What did your time in the military teach you about leadership? I would say the one thing that I learned about leadership is that it's not always the guys above you that you're looking up to as a leader, but the guys next to you, your brother's standing next to you. You can learn a lot of things with each other, exposing yourself to different dynamics and learning and forging that character through guys that are teaching you leadership skills right next to you. Lead by example, not by what you say. Show people and influence people. And I appreciate it, guys. Keep sending those questions in. Awesome episode of Media Lab, and see you guys next time.